Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from the Frontier. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you had a great long weekend. Um, we had quite a lot of drama. Dad wasn't well, so he was flown up to Nairobi and um, also had a fantastic mind speak with Jeremy Awari, and we'll be publishing content from that um, at beginning today. And uh, he said many things. We are systemically important in all markets in which we operate in Africa. This is about the Barclays Africa franchise, which I think is now very undervalued. Macro thoughts, the fear index has dropped to a 10-year low as the market is baiting copycats of the mystery trader called 50 Cent. But it's an incredible development that actually. Bitcoin has spiked to an all-time high. Cryptocurrency has been the top performing currency every year since 2010 except 2014 and it's up 46% so far in 2017 and it was my trade for the year at the beginning of the year on the 30th of December so the optimal portfolio at this moment looks like this one long Bitcoin up 46% and long Bitcoin versus gold on the spread you can have a look at this from Holger Bitcoin versus gold which makes that same point home thoughts it was only my second night in Africa, yet something had begun to grow inside me which I could not stop, as if my childhood dreams had finally found the place where they could materialize. I had arrived where I was always meant to be. I did not know how it could be practically achieved, but I was certain beyond any shadow of a doubt that it was here that I wanted to live. Cookie Gellman, who was shot in the stomach. We still haven't heard from aliens. Here's why it may never happen. It's an article with a new scientist, and of course, that took me back to Don DeLillo. Somehow, we are picking up signals from radio programs of 50, 40, 50, 60 years ago. The specialist is monitoring data on his mission console when a voice breaks in. A voice that carried with it a strange and unspecifiable poignancy. He checks in with his flight dynamics and conceptual paradigm officers at Colorado Command. We have a deviate tomahawk. We copy. There's a voice. We have gross oscillation here. There's some interference. I've gone redundant, but I'm not sure it's helping. We are clearing an outframe to locate source. Thank you, Colorado. It is probably just selective noise. You are negative red on the step function quad. It was a voice, I told them. We have just received an affirm on selective noise. We will correct Tomahawk. In the meantime, advise you to stay redundant to the voice and contrast to Colorado's metallic pigeon. What a fantastic phrase. Is a melange of repartee, laughter, and song with a quality of purest, sweetest sadness. Somehow we are picking up signals from radio programs 40, 50, 60 years ago. I like this photograph a view of the Golden Gate Bridge from the May Marine Headlands taken with a DSLR camera. We went there to San Francisco when we were quite early in our marriage and had such a wonderful holiday. I must say, stayed at the Mandarin Oriental, which was rather grand as well, drove down that route which hugs the coastline. It's an amazing country. I shot this at the beach in Kismayo a few days ago. I've never witnessed a more beautiful sunset. That is yes seen. I've waited a long time for this shot, six years in fact. This elephant brings a mystique that demands our deference and respect. He is the Don, David Yarrow. Neanderthals have long served as phylogenetic foil to our own species, Homo sapiens. I have to go read that link. Political refle Reflections National Security Advisor McMaster says the US will continue to pay for that missile defense system in South Korea, contradicting his president. South Korea says the US missile shield THAAD is now technically ready for operations. 
A defiant North Korea hints at nuclear tests to boost force to the maximum. North Korea suggested on Monday it will continue its nuclear weapons tests, saying it will bolster its nuclear force to the maximum in a consecutive and successive way at any moment. And I said on the 18th of April, we're dealing with two principles whose very raison d'etre appears to be escalation. But interestingly, there's been a change of tone from Trump, talking about meeting him, giving him some respect, saying that you know, it couldn't have been easy to have taken power at such a young age. Um, it's quite clever, actually, in point of fact. An unqualified maybe, Trump suggests the US is hacking Pyongyang nuke program. Vox the snake, Donald Trump's favorite story, perfectly describes his first 10 days in office. There is a story Donald Trump liked to tell on the campaign trail, the story of the snake. The fable goes like this, a tender-hearted woman finds a wounded snake on the road. She takes it in and nurses it back to health. The snake revived bites her. The woman dying asks why. Trump loves recounting the story. Interesting piece in the FT about how distressed debt buyers rule the roost in Trump's White House, and ex Goldman Sachs alumni as well. This distinction matters. Financiers who build their careers by handling distressed assets are trained to make high-risk, high-reward trades, particularly if they can control the downside risk. They scorn bureaucratic process and focus on results. They will pivot and cut their losses if a deal goes sour. They embrace brinkmanship and will often be ultra-aggressive <coughs> at the start of a bid, but later retreat to cut a deal. Above all, distressed debt players are opportunistic, not ideological. They are constantly hunting for value in assets and trades that are mispriced or widely scorned. And saying this is the mentality, the mentality that shaped how Mr. Trump's team emerged last year. The US is supposed to be the grown up at the dinner table. This is former National Security Advisor Susan Rice in an interview set, which aired on Sunday on Fareed Zakaria. Uh, it, it's meant to be the grown up at the dinner table. We're not supposed to be the crazy aunt in the attic that nobody knows what is going to do next. It's been a bit like that, hasn't it? Um, look at these photographs from Al Arabiya. We look at some of the moments, moments of President Trump's first hundred days. The smell of burnt rubber, Saudi Arabia's young prince's U-turn on reform. Even at the height of the Arab Spring, the Saudi regime had few domestic opponents. At their best, they mustered a few hundred protesters to gather for a day of rage in March 2011 outside the Interior Ministry demanding a freely elected parliament and a constitutional monarchy. Many of its organizers were later jailed, but fear is only part of the reason for absence of protest. In a kingdom which acts like a heavily armed charity, do, doling out cradle to coffin welfare, few see reason to upset the falafel stand. Two thirds of Saudi Arabia's 21 million citizens are employed by the government and expect annual pay rises, whether working or not. Basically taking quite a negative perspective uh, on uh, Saudi Arabia, the Crown Prince, and what he's trying to do. And uh, I wrote about this in August uh, 2015 when I said the end is nigh, and it's not going to take much. It just takes another lurch lower in the price of crude oil, and it's going to be, this time, it's going to be a coup de grace. Um, I said oil-based economies are going to contract, currencies which have already collapsed are going to be routed, and Greek-style austerity will be the order of the day. The meltdown is coming. Kapuscinski said, if the crowd disperses, goes home, does not reassemble, we say the revolution is over. I said the revolution is only just beginning. Leaked details from May's disastrous dinner with Juncker suggest Brexit could be far worse than anyone can imagine. The EU team left Downing Street in the state of shock 
Juncker placed a late night call to Angela Merkel to convey his pessimism about the lack of knowledge or understanding in Downing Street about the Brexit policy of the EU 27 governments. Every bit as sovereign and accountable to their voters as May in Britain. Um, uh, the next day, Merkel told the Bundestag that Britain suffered from illusions over Brexit, which produced the predictable insults from anti-EU Tories and London's monolingual journalists writing for the offshore press. Let's move on to the currency markets. Euro dollar 109.18, dollar index 99.06, Japanese yen through 112, 112.11.12 12 trading. It's an interesting place for the yen. If it moves much higher from, if it moves lower from here, we're going to 115. Swiss franc 0.9958, the pound softer 128.74. The Australian dollar 0.7526 was over 0.7550 earlier on the RBA announcement. India rupee 64.125. Um, South Korean won, which has behaved remarkably well given, you know, the tensions on the peninsula, 1129.43, Brazilian real 317.50, Egyptian pound 18.1190, and the rand a little bit firmer at 1335.17. Dollar index, I'll put up a three month chart. You've got to keep an eye on that area, on that key level, 99.50. We're below there for now. That's the key pivot price. The euro has survived the French gap, at least until now. BNP Paribas recommends shorting the common currency targets in 105. We're now at 109.18. I don't agree with that trade, actually. I think the euro is showing some strength. The hard data is confirming that the euro rebound is now very solid, as he said. The Australian dollar is now trading at 0.7525, having been over 0.7550 earlier in the session. Life after oil means real estate is Canada's new crutch. This is business. Gold now at 1256.30. We've come off those high levels around 1300, um, where we looked uh, where we looked as if we we're going close to 1350, but we've softened up. I think we nothing really broke from the Korean Peninsula, and the market was priced for something to happen. U.S. WTI drops below key technical 200-day moving average amid glut concerns. It's now trading at $49 a barrel. Um, let's see if we can pop over 49. Holy guacamole! Avocado prices hit a record high. Uh, Apparently, look at this chart uh, from the terminal, they always spike in price in the summer. Um, but check out this year, which is blue versus the past 20 years. Wheat prices are also headed for record gains in Chicago on Monday as the U.S. winter crop faced substantial losses from snow and high winds. Maduro hiked the minimum wage by 60%. Uh, so it informs you more of the actual problems you've got uh, with the runaway inflation. South Korean stocks on track to close at a record high helps that Samsung Electronics is up 12.4% from late April. David Inglis, the global growth hotspots of the future are here. If you want to be at the epicenter of global growth in the next few decades, you could do worse than relocate to somewhere like Kigali, Foshan or Belo Horizonte. That's because many cities that today are still comparative backwaters on a global level will become major contributors to economic performance thanks to fast population growth, according to a new report by HSBC economist James Pomeroy. Kaguta Museveni, a five times elected dictator, check out this interview on Talk to Al Jazeera. You can see the Ugandan president uh, um, measuring his interviewer and then getting the measure of him, I suspect. He was a great guest at Mindspeak in 2011. That link is there as well. UAE's battled, hardened military expands into Africa and the Middle East. This is a report on ABC News. The UAE is better known for its skyscrapers and pampered luxuries, but its small size belies a quiet expansion 
of its battle hardened military into Africa and elsewhere in the Middle East. This is really a big story, worth having a read, getting an idea of what they're up to. I mean, they've come as, they're coming down as far as Somalia when it comes to Kenya. Does our destiny lie in the Horn of Africa rather than Arusha asks Charles Kobo um, in the East African, and I think he's asking the right question, actually. Motorcade treason and plot, 28th April report, African Confidential, President Lungu's actions in imprisoning the opposition leader are viewed with growing amazement and alarm. Hichilema's arrest for treason was at first dismissed as an intimidatory gimmick by President Lungu after the clash of the motorcades earlier this month. However, as days behind bars turned into weeks for the leader of the opposition United Party, the view that Lungu is creating a new dictatorship is increasing in currency. Jilima has been in custody since he was arrested in a raid on his home on the 10th of April. Outrage over Hichilima's arrest and the treason charges growing outside Zambia's borders. Uh, sharply criticized Lungu's actions, not least because some see strong similarities with the actions of their own leaders. So a lot of people are very concerned about the direction of travel in Zambia. Barclays, uh, Africa, Barclays PLC took an 884 million pound write down on its African unit, uh, which is it's in the process of selling down. Uh, Mr. Gigabyte's baptism of fire, this is the Africa Confidential, about the new South African finance minister, the new finance minister swings through New York and Washington, trying to give an impression of business as usual. Fourth finance minister in two years, encountered bemusement and indifference when he visited the US last week for the IMF and World Bank spring meetings in Washington. I'll put up a photograph of him. South Africa's Zuma quits the May Day rally after boos from the crowd. He controls the party, but he doesn't control the public. South African all share up 6.25% this year. Dollar versus Rand 1340 is a key pivot. We're currently a little below that. Egypt keeps its customs exchange rate at 16.5. Uh, the actual FX rate is 18.119. Nigerian all shares down 4.12% so far this year. Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index is up 12.26% so far this year. President Gangop of Namibia praises President Mugabe's industrial policy. Oh goodness. I like this photograph. This isn't Vegas, people. This is Kigali City. The president here in Kenya announced an 18% increase in the minimum wage. It's Labor Day and an election up ahead of us. Voter fatigue may doom Kenyan opposition presidential nominee, says Bloomberg. We can expect the same results, Jared Jaffrey, an analyst at NKC African Economics in Pearl, South Africa, said by phone, Kenyatta is in a strong position. On the other side, Dungu Wainaina, executive director of the Nairobi-based International Center for Policy and Conflict, said this is going to be the most brutal elections ever in the history of Kenya. It's going to be volatile and high voltage. Oh dear. Mr. Sonko stole the show during Labor Day celebrations at Uhuru Park. This is the future of Kenyan politics. My piece over the weekend is let's be innovative. I was wandering around the garden at Ham House in London a few weeks ago when our guide described how the lady of the house created an aviary just outside her bedroom window so that she could be awakened every morning by the sound of birdsong. <coughs> I love the sound of birdsong in the morning. It's so sensual and full of life's promise. I am not a birder or an ornithologist, but I have a close friend who is, and I recall vividly spotting a leopard in the tree in the Samburu, and my friend Jack was far more interested in a rare bird. And I had wanted to say, look here, old chap, that is a leopard with its kill in a tree in the Samburu, and it's a big deal. And I recalled an article in the New Yorker called Streaming Dreams, YouTube turns pro, people went from broad to narrow, he said, think they will continue to go that way, spend more and more time in the niches 
because now the distribution landscape allows for more narrowness. And what I'm talking about is in fact tourism. The tourism sector had a remarkable recovery as it benefited from improved security. This is Zachary Mwangi of the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, who said, who said this at the launch of the annual economic survey. Visitor numbers rose to 1.34 million from 1.18 million the prior year, with earnings rising 17.8%, Mwangi said. 1.34 million visitors is better than the previous year, but in the scheme of things, there's barely even a blip on the radar. Morocco ranks first in Africa with 10 million visitors. South Africa ranks second with 9 million. Our beach product is not cheap and has not moved since the days it was optimized for vacationing Volkswagen workers in the 1980s and the 1990s. The sad reality is our beach product has been ubered Today it relies not on the kindness of strangers, but the kindness of loyalists like Nairobi folks. I was in Ras Al Khama and it was in fact cheaper for me to fly to Dubai, spend a week there, than in Mombasa over Christmas. The place was full and they told me occupancy was never less than 80%. Just ask your kids where they would want to be. The answer is right there. And there you have it. One can afford to make constant investment and the other cannot and over a five-year cycle it's game over. TPS Serena Hotels reported full year 2016 earnings last week. They reported a 4.514% increase in full year revenues and a 254% turnaround in full year profit before tax. Um, they spoke to the tourism sector in East Africa witnessing a slow but positive turnaround during the second half of 2016 and that traditional and new international source markets performed slightly better than in 2015. Cited increased activity within, within the EA corporate sector and domestic leisure market segment and spoke of experiencing a margin squeeze resulting from overdevelopment around TPS units. Serena Hotels is the only listed tourism asset of the Securities Exchange. Share price is cheap and worth buying. Let me put up a photograph of that leopard. In the Samburu, Kenya's inflation surged in April as impact of drought worsens. The food and non-alcoholic drinks index, which accounts for a third of the inflation basket, increased 21% in April from a year ago. We should see it start to come down now. <coughs> Afrex and Bank confirms that talks to set up a 3 billion shilling headquarter HQ in Nairobi have collapsed sites dispute with Kenya's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. ARM Cement reported full year earnings per share, negative three shillings and 30 cents. Revenue was down 13.182%. EPS was negative 3.3 versus negative 5.84 previous year. Business challenges in Tanzania, they got the new equity of 14.1 billion from CDC in October 2016. Turnover lower primarily, primarily due to increased competition and lower cement selling prices in Tanzania. Construction sector in Kenya has remained buoyant, volumes up 10%, interest burden increased substantially in 2016, but that now comes down. Company decided to exit all of its non cement businesses, has entered into agreement for the sale of the non cement business to a strategic investor, expects to close the sale during Q3 decided to complete expansion of the Arthi River cement grinding plant, thereby increasing the Kenya capacity by 650,000 tonnes a year. I'm sure there are a number of suitors for the fertiliser business. They now have dramatically right-sized their balance sheet, and I expect a return to profitability this year. East African Cables reported full year earnings per share loss, one shilling and 80 cents a share. Turnover was down 1.981%. Improved, um, they had previously reported a full year loss of two shillings and 21 cents. This time they're reporting one shilling and 80 cents, no dividend. Um, saying they recorded a 31% increase in gross profit levels owing to production efficiencies. Turnaround has taken two years now and it still has not turned around. Ever ready, this is interesting, reported first half earnings, earnings per share up 721%. <coughs> sales went down 19.473%, but they had a 
one-off gain on the disposal of land, which meant that they reported uh, earnings per share of one shilling and 74 cents. They're paying a one shilling special dividend, and the share price is just two shillings and 65 cents. That dividend is worth 37%. Bit more express Kenya report of full year earnings per share loss two shillings 74 cents a share and a profits warning in their commentary they're talking about a big turnaround strategy based on real estate Kenya shilling when I checked this morning was firmer at 103.14 Nairobi all share is down 0.04 percent year to date NSE 20 is down 0.9 percent uh, year to date there's been a strong recovery since hitting some lows earlier in the year. Once again, thank you for stopping by and uh, it's much appreciated.